Cubital Tunnel Syndrome Cubital Tunnel Syndrome results from compression and traction on the ulnar nerve at the elbow region. It is the second most common upper extremity compressive neuropathy. Patients with cubital tunnel syndrome are more likely to have advanced disease when they seek medical treatment than patients with carpal tunnel syndrome. Chronic under nerve dysfunction may result in muscle weakness, joint contractures, permanent loss of sensation, and timely surgical treatment is important, especially in patients that they have worsening or constant symptoms despite non-surgical treatment. The ulnar nerve travels through a tunnel of tissue, cubital tunnel, that runs underneath the medial epicondyle. At the under nerve enters the anterior compartment in the forearm, it gives innervation to the flexor carpi and nerves and the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus. Distally, the under nerve supplies several muscles of the hand. As the under nerve passes behind the elbow, it may become compressed or irritated. What are the causes of under nerve entrapment around the cubital tunnel? Approximately, the arcade of struthers, which is a thickened connective tissue between the medial triceps and the intermuscular septum 6 to 10 cm proximal to the medial epicondyle. Arcade of struthers is different from ligament of struthers. Ligament of struthers deal with median nerve compression. If you find a medial bony process in the distal humerus, that may give you median nerve compression at the ligament of struthers. That arcade of struthers makes a hiatus that pinches the under nerve, as you can see here. Posterior to the medial epicondyle and covered by the aspone ligament, the cubital tunnel proper is the most common site of under nerve compression. The aspone ligament originates from the medial epicondyle and the humeral head of the FCU and insert into the olecranon and the ulnar head of the FCU. Its average length is approximately 2 cm. Distally in the forearm, the ulnar nerve can be entrapped on the sharp fascia of the flexor carpi and nares or between the two heads of the flexor carpi and nares and on the fascia of the flexor digitorum superficialis. The cross-sectional area of the tunnel decreased by 40% during elbow flexion as its shape changed from ovoid to trapezoidal. You can see that the ulnar nerve changed its shape when the elbow is extended and when the elbow is flexed. The intraneural pressure is lowest at 40 degree to 50 degree of elbow flexion and sharply increase at the elbow flexes more than 90 degrees. Therefore, the elbow splints are made to have the elbow in slight flexion. Post-traumatic cubital tunnel syndrome occurs after elbow dislocations and after distal humerus fractures. The symptoms may occur at the time of the initial injury, appear immediately after surgery, or develop later on. Post-traumatic cubital tunnel syndrome, they do not respond well to non-surgical treatment. The patient will have less chance of complete symptoms resolution, increased chance of persistent symptoms, and a higher rate of revision surgery.
after treatment, and transposition may be better in these patients. How about clinical examination? Cubital tunnel syndrome is a clinical diagnosis based on the patient history and the examination. So the patient will have decreased sensation of the little and the ring finger that becomes worse by prolonged elbow flexion. In general, bending the elbow stretch the nerve and exacerbate the symptoms. Straightening or extending the elbow will relax the ulnar nerve. Patient may also report hand weakness, loss of coordination with fine manipulations. The symptoms will get worse by excessive elbow flexion, such as excessive use of a cell phone. There will be weakness of finger abduction and abduction. The patient may also have night symptoms. The patient may also have weak or clumsy hand and muscle wasting. Pressure on the nerve at the elbow can cause numbness and pain along the course of the nerve from the posteromedial elbow into the ulnar forearm or hand. Physical examination will show decreased sensation in the little and ring fingers. Look for wasting and atrophy of the first dorsal interosseous muscle. Wartenberg sign when the little finger cannot be actively abducted because of weakness of the third palmar interosseous muscle, which is innervated by the ulnar nerve. The fifth finger abducts as the result of the ulnar insertion of the extensor digiti quinti. And the Farman sign occurs when the patient attempts a key pinch and the patient exhibits thumb interpharyngeal joint flexion because the flexor pollicis longus attempts to compensate for weakness of the adductor pollicis, which is innervated by the ulnar nerve. The thumb compensate to resist the pull on the paper by flexing the IP joint, as you can see here. This picture will show from a sign to the left and the normal on the nerve to the right. In patients with more severe on the nerve neuropathy, glowing of the fourth and fifth fingers occurs due to functional flexor digitorum profundus and loss of the intrinsics. How about provocative tests? That in L sign, tapping technique performed to test for symptoms of ulnar nerve entrapment at the cubital tunnel. The elbow flexion test. The elbow is held in full flexion and the wrist is extended. The positive test will produce paresthesia and pain. The flexion compression test, which is done by compression of the ulnar nerve posterior to the medial epicondyle during elbow flexion. Then determine the ulnar nerve stability by placing a finger posterior to the medial epicondyle to see if the nerve subluxates or the nerve is stable throughout elbow flexion. Under nerve hypermobility can be seen in about one third of the patients, but it is not associated with symptomatic cubital tunnel syndrome. It is important to know if the nerve is hypermobile, which the surgeon may consider transposition of the nerve rather than simple in situ decompression. The differential diagnosis parathesia of the ulnar hand can result from C8T1 radicular compression due to disc herniation. Ulnar nerve symptoms can also result from thoracic outlet syndrome. Ulnar nerve symptoms can also result from under nerve compression within Guyane Canal at the rest. Arthritis of the elbow and medial epicondylitis 
can also cause medial elbow pain. Classification. The condition can be mild, which the patient will have subjective sensory symptoms without muscle atrophy. In moderate cubital tunnel syndrome, there is sensory symptoms with weakness on pinch and grip and maybe some atrophy. In severe cubital tunnel syndrome, the patient will have profound muscle atrophy and sensory disturbance and weakness that prohibit active finger crossing. The treatment, non-surgical treatment is used in patients with mild and from moderate cubital tunnel syndrome. Used non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication, physiotherapy, night bracing, elbow pads, and activity modification. Surgery is done if there is a failure of conservative treatment after three months and positive EMG and nerve studies, or if the patient has an advanced cubital tunnel syndrome. What type of surgery? Controversial. Usually, simple decompression in the majority of cases or anterior transposition in select cases. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.